Good morning. Welcome to this virtual learning program prepared by Rainbow International School. And we are about to discuss chapter 9 and this is only the first part of the topic. We shall be taking up today analysis of accounts. It's taken from chapter 26 of our textbook. IGCSE Business Studies, 5th edition, authored by Karen Warrington and Peter Stimson. In this chapter, we shall be discussing the concept and importance of profitability and liquidity. We shall also be discussing how to interpret the financial performance of a business by calculating and analyzing profitability ratios and liquidity ratios like gross margin, net profit margin, return on capital employed, current ratio, and asset test. We shall also be discussing the needs of different users of accounts and ratio analysis. And the last part of uh, this chapter, chapter 26, uh, we shall be discussing how users of accounts and ratio results might use information to help make decisions, for example, whether to lend to or invest in the business. Now, the first part is uh, is the analysis of published accounts. As uh, you will remember, um, we have discussed what is referred to by company accounts or the so-called uh, financial statements. And we, we have to remember also that these published accounts of limited companies are made available to all those interested in the performance of the business. And that's what we call, who remembers? Stakeholders, right? They will analyze the company accounts. Okay, so now we must look at how these accounts can be used and analyzed to give the information uh, these groups need. We have here the question, what is meant by analysis of accounts? Okay, according to our textbook, it means using the data contained in the accounts to make some useful observations about the performance and the financial strength of the business. And without analysis of accounts, it's impossible to tell whether a business is performing better this year than last year or performing better than other businesses, okay? Now, for better understanding, you will find in your textbook on page 311, a case study, and let us consider those results for two food retailing companies. You will see that we will be referring to Fresh Foods uh, Public Limited Company and Food Store PLC as well. The net profit uh, gain in 2018 are $300,000 and $30,000 respectively. Now, what conclusions can be drawn from these two figures? Is Fresh Foods PLC much more successful than Food Store PLC? Now, you will see the figures and you may be biased because as you see, a Food Store has a lesser figure, lesser profit displayed on the table. But let us try to go on and see if this information is enough to, to make our analysis or decision. 
Another question to consider is, is the management of fresh foods PLC 10 times more efficient than the management of food store PLC? Again, as we can see, probably yes, and some may say no, but uh, we don't have enough account to make our decision valid or credible. Another question that we, we might want to ask is, is Fresh Foods PLC making much better use of its assets than its competitor? Uh, again, we, we may not have uh, enough uh, 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 reference to answer this question. And the, the other question that we might be asking is, is the profit margin made on each item sold much higher in one company than the other? Well, this is not uh, enough. This account, the net profit, should, uh, is not enough for us to, to tell whether the profit margin made on each item sold is much higher in one company than the other. Okay, so definite answers to these questions cannot be given unless other information is considered. So let's take, for example, the total value of capital employed by both these businesses. Capital employed is defined as the shareholders' equity plus non-current liabilities. It is the total long-term and permanent capital invested in a business businessman, a capitalist, um, when he or she invests an amount of uh, money, uh, it will be classified as a capital employed account. Okay, so now let's try to take the capital employed data, extract it from our financial statement, and let's take the Fresh Foods PLC, as PLC's capital employed in 2018, it was like um, $900,000, and for a food store, it's $60,000. Now, let us try to look at these figures in front of us, and uh, let's go back to those questions and check whether we may be able to answer them. But uh, we may further ask, which company seems to have made more efficient use of the capital invested? We need to compare the net profit made with capital employed in each company. Food store PLC has made $30 thousand dollars profit from an investment of sixty thousand dollars right and fresh foods plc has made three hundred thousand dollars profit from an investment of nine hundred thousand dollars now by comparing these uh, figures from the accounts food store plc appears to have achieved a better performance even though its overall level of profits is lower. Do you see the difference? Now we shall be taking the different ratios for us to be able to enhance our um, decision making given all these uh, liquidity and profitability ratios, okay? Okay, so the example in the case study in the preceding slides um, shows how important it is to use more than one figure from the accounts when trying to assess how a business is performing. Comparing 
Two figures from the accounts in this way is called ratio analysis. This is a very important way of analyzing the published accounts. Now, we have many ratios which we can be calculated from a set of accounts. And we shall be discussing about like five only of the most commonly used accounts. These ratios are used to measure and compare profitability or performance and liquidity of a business. So we shall ha be having from profitability ratios or to check the performance of a business. We have three ratios, um, namely ROCE or the return on capital employed, gross profit margin and net profit margin. Net profit margin is the so-called profit margin. It is the final profit uh, being taken when uh, presenting uh, any financial report. And for the liquidity ratios, we have two um, kinds, the current ratio and the acid test ratio. Before we proceed, let us try to get the definition or concept of profitability. From the word profit, which is an amount of money the business has made after all costs have been taken off revenue, we are able to uh, derive the word profitability, which is the measure of the profit made relative to either the value of the sales achieved or the capital invested in the business. Now, profitability is measured in percentage form. It is a measure of efficiency. It can be used to compare the business performance over a number of years to check perhaps whether a business is doing well. And if not, measures uh, may be taken to save the status of the business. It can also be used to compare its performance with that of other businesses and this is to um, know the, the place of the business in the market. Okay, so from here we may proceed to uh, knowing the importance of prof prof profitability. Uh, now, why why do we have to check on the performance of its business? What is the importance of profitability? Let's see. It is important to investors when deciding which business to invest in. It is also important to directors and managers of the business to assess whether the business is becoming more or less successful over time. This might lead to the directors and managers needing to change the operations of the business to improve performance or profitability. Now let's go to these different profitability ratios. As you can see, we have three formulas here. Uh, ROCE to find the return on capital employed gross profit margin formula and the net profit margin or profit margin formula. As I mentioned earlier, profit margin or the net profit margin is considered the final profit figures in any financial statement. For better understanding, we shall consider the case study on page 313 to apply the formula uh, to find the return on capital employed. And we have here, uh, based on the case study, ABC Computing Limited made a net profit of $280. So based on the formula, the numerator will be the net profit, which is $280. And in 2018, also as well, the capital employed was $1,065 million. So, uh, uh, its return on capital employed in 2018 is found in this slide. 
you have the percentage result which is 26.3 percent now let's try to see the analysis of these figures the company made a return on the capital employed in the business of 26.3 percent it's positive it's not a loss it's a gain the higher this result the more successful the managers are in earning profit from capital use in the business and if this percentage increases in 2019 it means that the managers are running the business more efficiently making higher profits from each dollar invested in the business this result should be compared with other years and other companies to see if the managers are running the business more efficiently or not so if uh, uh, we have the figures on uh, net profit and capital employed from 2017 we may use that result with uh, uh, compared to this result 36.3 percent so that uh, the investors would know whether the business is doing good should they invest in this business will they take the chance the risk of uh, doling out their or investing using their money giving out their cash as capital part of the capital of the business now let's try to see the case study to apply the two other formulas uh, under considering profitability uh, or performance of the business now we have the case study again on page 313 and the case study is an application of the gross profit margin formula and as we see we're using again ABC Computing Limited may, who, which made a gross profit in 2018 of 400 million dollars the revenue was 1300 million dollars and we shall uh, uh, use this formula to derive to come up with 30.8 percent now the analysis to this figure is that on every dollar worth of goods sold the company made an average 30.8 cents gross profit remember we're using the dollar denomination so our uh, our halala to be considered here is in uh, cents this is before other expenses have been deducted meaning um, this percentage this net this gross profit um, is taken from the profit from sales we in order to come up with the net profit we have to consider the expenses to be deducted from this gross profit so now this figure we have here is before deductions uh, will be made this is not the final profit of the company now this result can be compared also with other years and other companies to check on the performance of the business whether it's doing good or otherwise if this percentage increases in 2019 it would suggest that the prices have been increased by more than the cost of sales uh, has risen or maybe the cost of sales has been reduced probably a new supplier is being used or managers have negotiated lower cost prices case study at page 314 is an application of the last formula uh, under profitability ratios uh, in order to uh, in order for directors and investors to make decisions for the business ABC computing limited now as you see we have the formula given and uh, this is the um, application considering the net profits and the revenue 
on page 314. The analysis is the company made 21.5 cents net profit on its dollar worth of sales. Okay. This is lower than the gross profit margin because all other expenses including interest have been deducted from gross profit to arrive at net profit before tax. So again, it's mentioned here that although we deducted already the expenses, expenses from the gross profit, tax will come later. Okay? The higher this result, the more successful the managers are in making net profit from sales. What could this result be compared with? Again, it should be compared with other years and other companies. Okay, uh, what do these uh, profitability ratios tell us? One profitability ratio result is not very useful. When a ratio result is compared with others, only then some effective analysis can be done. We have a table below uh, wherein you will find the three different uh, ratios applied, the observation respectively, and analysis as well. Let's take, for instance, the gross profit margin. Um, in 2017, uh, the gross profit margin using uh, to find the profitability ratio is 20%. In 2018, it's 24%. So what's the observation? Gross profit and its dollar of sales has increased. And the analysis is the business is more successful at converting sales into profit. Because as you see, there's an increase, right? Either the profit of, or uh, I mean the price of goods has increased by more than costs, or the cost of sales has fallen, but the price has not been reduced at all, or not by as much. Now let's go to the net profit margin. As you will see, uh, in 2017, it's 14%, in 2018, it's 12%. Let's see. What's the observation? Net profit on each dollar of sales has fallen, even though gross profit margin has increased. The business, based on this analysis, is less successful at converting sales into net profit. The overheads or fixed costs of the business must have increased significantly during the year, thereby reducing the company's net profit compared to revenue. And the last is the return on capital employed. 2017 is 10%, 2018 is 6%. Now the observation is that profit made for each dollar invested in the business has fallen. And what's the analysis? Either the net profit has fallen or the capital employed has increased. If capital employed has increased, this could mean that the managers of the business have invested more, hoping to make higher profit in the future. So we're done with uh, unlocking the difficulties in profitability, the concept and uh, importance, and the different ratios. Now let's go to liquidity. Uh, you'll find in this slide the concept and importance of liquidity. It's on page uh, 315 of your textbook. Liquidity means that assets are not easily convertible into cash. If a business cannot pay its suppliers for materials that are important to production, or if the business cannot repay an overdraft when required to, it is said to be illiquid. The businesses it owes money may force it to stop trading and sell its assets so that the debts are repaid. So when you say liquidation of assets, that means trying to sell or get rid, um, perhaps uh, through bidding or private or personal selling. And uh, the goal is to acquire cash in order to pay or repay uh, those people who are expecting payment from the said business. 
Okay. So next slide, we shall go to the liquidity ratios. In this slide, you will find the different formula of the two types of liquidity ratios, current ratio, which is equal to the current assets over the current liabilities times 100. And asset test ratio is also uh, equal, to, uh, equal to current assets, although this time inventory should be deducted over current liabilities times 100. And let us try to see, um, check an application on the next uh, slide. Okay, now considering this case study on page 315, we uh, may apply the current ratio formula and uh, we shall be considering also the same company. The analysis for this uh, result is uh, first the business could only just pay off all its short term debts from current assets. 1.25 is an acceptable result of it. A really safe current ratio would be between 1.5 and 2. If the current ratio is less than 1, it would mean that the business could have real cash flow problems. It could not pay off its short-term debts from current assets. More effective analysis of liquidity is possible if results for previous years and other similar businesses are available. If the current ratio is very high, say over 2, it could mean that too much working capital is tied up in unprofitable current assets. The current ratio is useful, is useful but it assumes that all current assets can be turned into cash quickly, which may not be the case at times. This is not always the case. It might be very difficult to sell all inventories in a short period of time, and because of this, a second liquidity ratio is used. And now for the asset test ratio, which is the second uh, liquidity ratio, we will consider the same case situation of ABC Computing Limited, and we shall try to use their situation to this test, whether this test or this ratio is uh, applicable to their situation. So given the, the same uh, situation, we have the analysis made as a result. Uh, of one would mean that the company could just pay off its short-term debts from its most liquid assets. This is an, an, an acceptable asset test result. The company cannot do this test, however, because of the 0 0.7 result. This might be worrying for the management and the steps may have to be taken to improve the liquidity of the business, like reducing the level of inventories by selling some for cash. And so we see that this is the current situation or the would-be situation of the ABC Computing Limited if they would be applying this to given formula or given ratio. Now what can these ratios tell us? One liquidity ratio result is not very useful. When a ratio result is compared with others, then some effective analysis can be done. It's very similar to uh, the, the relevance of profitability ratios. Now, given the table below, you'll find ratio results, the observation, and the respective analysis. For the current ratio, of 1 in 2018 from the current ratio of 1.5 in 2017 the observation is the current ratio has fallen between 2017 and 2018 so the business has brought and used many more supplies as analyzed but not yet paid for them the business has used cash to pay for fixed assets and for the second situation, the current ratio, 1.75 in 2018, and another test conducted, another 
using the same uh, situation, acid test ratio uh, resulted to 0 0.5 in the same year. The current ratio is acceptable and much higher than, uh, than the acid test ratio in 2018. And what's the analysis? The acid test ratio might be too low. The business might be at risk of not being able to pay its short-term debts from its liquid assets, cash and accounts, receivable, or debtors. The great difference between the two results is because of a relatively high level of inventories, and that is the analysis made for these situations. Now, um, you are tasked to um, solve or do activity 26.1 and activity 26.2. They are found respectively on pages 314 and 316. Now, um, I have given these uh, guide answers so that you may know how to go about with the um, with the case study or the activity, but in the in, in the next exercises, I'm not giving you the I won't be giving you the guide answers. You have to solve them and try your best. And uh, on during the next discussion or before we go to the next discussion or next video presentation, uh, we shall be discussing the tasks given to you. Okay, just so um, to make it easy here for you to solve the problem. You may want to solve the activity problems, but, you know, um, it's your choice. And then consult for correction using this slide. Okay. Okay, that ends our presentation for today. And... Uh, there will be a second part to this uh, presentation. The continuation will be uploaded soon. And that will be about pages 316 up to 320. And we shall be discussing also the exam style questions, short answer and data response on page 321 and the International Business in Focus on pages 319 to 320. Okay, so uh, we shall also be discussing the booklet uh, revision questions and answers and also the MCQs. So for now, take your break and I hope you'll find time to go over this uh, presentation once again for better understanding for enhancement so you may be very familiar with how profitability and liquidity goes okay that's all for now and happy virtual learning bye and take care as always